No. Nah. Um, probably, yeah, on-site mentoring is something we spoke about. Employee cultural okay. awareness well. is something we spoke about as well. Something that's not on that list is we spoke about um, the awareness from the employee's family about what it's like to work in a mine so they understand what they're going to. So it's not that they just can't come home at any drop of the hat or they're there to work, they just can't come away from that. So, um, so that was a bit of cultural awareness around both of that. Financial literacy was one that teaching them how to handle their money. Um, and I think that works for everyone that works in the mining industry. A lot of people are blowing a lot of money. So, but particularly with uh, young Indigenous people, I think it's important that they get that opportunity to, to save and give the opportunity to get some of their own possessions. Secession planning is around making sure that there's more people coming on into better positions um, and allowing some pathways for these young people to grow into leaders in the mining, in the mining industry and within the company itself. And part of that is an exit plan by the company who are non-Indigenous people moving on, not getting comfortable in their job and just sitting there because they, their ass is on a really good seat. They move on and the Aboriginal people then can come in and fill those roles and become leaders and, and drivers within the company. Excellent. So, I mean, I, I think you, you think you touched on a really good one there, the, f the financial stuff. Um, it's very important with any, any Indigenous or Ab Aboriginal Torres Strait Islander employees coming in most often than not, they, they, they're earning or they're on less, le a lot less money than what they're going to. And there's obviously there's issues in relation to, okay, well, I'm earning X here, and then I'm going to go into a big, huge role that I'm going to get lots and lots of money for, and that's that literacy. So that's that financial literacy. How do, how, what, what do I need to spend? How do I need to spend it? And how do I actually... You know, it's all like poverty consciousness, consciousness stuff, so it's a very good point. But it's more than that. Um, and speaking from experience, because my background is in finance, okay. what happens is, uh, and this is a cultural thing, yep. and we have been brought up to share everything. Yep. So when these young ones come back, and I've had to deal with it so many times, um, where they have worked away, sometimes four, they do four and ones, um, and the whole family and extended family are at the airport. And so what happens is that by the end of that week, he's got, he or she has got nothing left. Yes. So it's about um, teaching them how to have separate accounts, have one for, the com for their family, one for themselves with their funds, and another one for savings. And once they get into that cycle and understand that, everyone's happy because they are still contributing to the family and extended yep. family. So it's um, – and, and this happens not only for <coughs> Indigenous kids, not so much for the fact that there's ex expectation that they've got to contribute everything, but non-Indigenous kids as well, uh, as you said. Yeah. Um, they just haven't got that uh, financial literacy at all yeah. and they just blow their money. Yeah. No, so it is point. really important yeah. when you have people going on mines, mine yeah. sites um, to be taught um, their financial literacy.